Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. So I'm very excited because today we are going to be reviewing I Was a Teenage Slasher by Stephen Graham Jones. Now why am I very excited about reading this? Because if you've been on my channel a while, you know I have this kind of love-hate relationship with Stephen Graham Jones. I pretty much don't enjoy any of his books outside of the My Heart is a Chainsaw Indian Lake trilogy. Um, I loved book one. I, it was a five-star read for me. Uh, book two I thought was great. And then book three angered me endlessly. Um, but the reason I'm excited for that is because instead of writing book three of the Indian Lake trilogy, Stephen Graham Jones wrote this. He then requested an extension for the third book in the trilogy and wrote that afterwards. So as somebody who was very disappointed in The Angel of Indian Lake, I really wanted to see what he wanted to get out of him and put on the page in this novel that made him put a pause on writing that trilogy. And I will come out and say that this is more akin to what I wanted from the conclusion of the Indian Lake trilogy than the actual conclusion was. So I'm going to read the inside flap of this. This is a standalone novel. I really hope it is not turned into a series, even though I feel like they could do what they did with My Heart is a Chainsaw with this, but I hope it is not. I hope this is a standalone novel. Um, and we're going to talk about a lot of things. I'm going to put spoilers at the end half of this book, because, or at the end half of this video, and I will warn you guys before that happens, because there's a lot of stuff that I really want to dissect from the ending of this novel that I think is very important to talk about. So let's read the inside plot. La Mesa, Texas, July 1989. It's the summer before senior year for best friends Tolly Driver and Amber Dennison. They're not in the marching band, they're not in the FFA, they don't really count. Amber's the only native student in town, and Tolly's only on the radar due to his father's recent death. This is all about to change. Bodies are going to be dropping fast in this small West Texas town for a few unbearably hot days that will resonate through the decades and even get made into a TV movie. Tolly and Amber will be famous, notorious even. Finally, everyone will know their names. This is Stephen Graham Jones x-raying the slasher genre, interrogating its motivations over the shoulder and in the voice of the killer itself. From a town he did some growing up in, in a year he was also 17. The kills will be poignant, the jokes will hurt, and the violence will be endearing. Everything's turned around for Tolly, for Amber, for all of La Mesa, Texas. Be happy you weren't there. Be happy you're only reading about it. All right, so I was so on board with the beginning of this book. I read like the first hundred pages extremely quickly. I really, really loved the kind of colloquial tone that Tolly Driver was using. I really loved uh, the setup and the premise. I loved the backstory of all of the teenagers that were going to be involved. I loved so much about it. Um, one of the things that I've determined I really like about Stephen Graham Jones is when he's writing teenage characters the, the kind of colloquial, gonzo-style writing that he uses gets toned down a bit. And, and I feel like it becomes much more easy to navigate than some of his other more adult-centric novels. Um, and I think he was trying so hard to write himself into this book that he really asked himself how he would speak as a 17-year-old. And I really, really appreciated um, the kind of teenage perspective that we had in this book. It reminded me very, very, very much of the essays in My Heart is a Chainsaw that Jane Daniels writes uh, to her professor, which are some of my favorite parts of that series. Um, so I really loved the kind of um, essay form that this book takes. It's almost entirely like a letter. Uh, you find it at the end, it is kind of a letter to somebody. Um, and I really, really liked the way that it was utilized here. I felt like the colloquial language that Stephen Graham Jones's character is using just was much more tangible and much more um, accessible than what he does when he's writing this kind of third person colloquial I'm telling a story but around the campfire style where uh, things start to get like jumbled and confused. This just kind of felt toned down a little bit and I just I liked it a lot more. One of the things I will say that did bother me about that kind of writing style though is um, I'm assuming they're kind of like West Texas isms. Um, like he's constantly using the phrase I might could have. Um, and just from like a grammar point of view, it was driving me crazy because it comes up so often. But I'm assuming that's kind of like a West Texas ism kind of thing. 
Um, so I was able to get over it, but I was very aware of how constantly that kind of phraseology was showing up uh, throughout this story. Um, yeah, I really loved the first third of this novel, I would say. I feel like once we really got into the actual slasheriness of it all and this kind of like deus ex machina that is creating everything that's happened is where the novel started to lose me. There's a large lull, I would say, um, as, as Tali is becoming this teenage slasher uh, that I was not prepared for. Um, just because when you think of a slasher novel and you think of like a town of like teenagers running wild during the summer like having boring kind of dragging bits is not something I was expecting from this novel and I feel like there's definitely a large lull throughout uh the center portion of this book the first is very fast paced and the last half is very and the last section like last third is very very fast paced but I did feel that there was this this drag throughout it that was just a little bit like I don't know like is it gonna kind of go downhill or is it gonna go uphill I'm not 100% sure Another thing that I found difficult and tricky with this book is there were a lot of terms and jobs and descriptions of things that are very, very pivotal to West Texas, like, farming towns. Um, and I did not understand what some of those things were, so I did have to keep, like, looking up what they were to figure out exactly what was going on. A pump jack plays a very pivotal role in the story, and it comes up quite a lot. I wasn't sure what that was. Once I saw a photo of it, I was like, oh yes, I've seen these before when I'm driving through like farmlands. Um, but I had no idea what that was. I'm not 100% sure I even know how it functions. But I will say, I think that Stephen Graham Jones kind of assumed the reader knew more than they did. Um, and I just wish there was a little bit more explanation into some of the stuff that he's talking about while telling this story. I will say it's a very good glimpse at this kind of teenage, coming-of-age slice of life, but told in a very dark, depressing style. Um, and I'm being very critical because I, I, I put Stephen Graham Jones kind of on this pedestal, not because I love him, but because I have seen what he has done that has impressed me, and I have seen what he's done that has let me down, and I really always want him to kind of go back to the style that he had and the captivating moments that he had with My Heart is a Chainsaw. Um, that being said, I liked this novel. I have my issues with it and I'm going to really go into them in the spoiler section, but I did like this novel. This was a four star read for me. Um, I really liked the dynamic between Tali and Amber. I thought they were a really great like best friend duo. I really kind of loved the, the, the difficult position that Amber was put in seeing her friend kind of become this slasher and trying to figure out how to deal with it and it's absurdist and it's not really ever going to happen in real life but the way he wrote about their friendship um I thought was absolutely incredible I do think that he really nailed the setting I've been to Texas for the first time very very recently I was in Austin Texas um back in September and so it was really cool seeing um things that are being described in this novel and like knowing how insanely flat Texas is I, I never realized how flat Texas was until I got there and I was like, whoa. Like there's a line in here where he's like, Texas is so flat that if your dog ran away, you could see your dog running away for two days straight. And I totally get that. So I think he nailed the absolute vibe in this. I will say there is a few fleeting scenes of animal cruelty that I wasn't a fan of. I didn't think they were necessary. Um, they aren't too horrible or too graphic, but they do happen and again, it did nothing for me to further the plot. Um, and I just felt like it was put there to kind of be almost like a shocking moment, but I don't understand the necessity of it, so that bummed me out a little bit. Um, and I just want to make you guys aware of that. I think another thing that I really did enjoy about this novel, though, is like, I think this should have been the third book in the Indian Lake trilogy. Um, because it is a slasher, and it's a slasher told from a different point of view, still using the same kind of tone as uh, My Heart is a Chainsaw, except our slasher expert this time, well, is actually another 17-year-old girl, it's Amber in this one, not our main character. He's got no idea what he's talking about. But I feel like there was a way that this could have been somehow a spin-off to 
the Indian Lake trilogy. Like, I know Amber gets a lot of her information on slashers from her older brother. I could easily see Stephen Graham Jones just being like, well, maybe she's Jade Daniel's cousin, you know? And they grew up together and saw each other on, like, holidays or something. And that's where she's getting all of her knowledge from and kind of connecting this world, you know? Yeah, this is set in 1989, and the first book in the Indian Lake trilogy is set in 2016. I'm aware of that, but I feel like there's a way that this could have been the third book. Because I got a lot of the slashery stuff that I wanted out of this book, and this book made a lot more sense than the mess that was The Angel of Indian Lake. So I, I understand why Stephen Graham Jones wanted to write this over Indian Lake. I really wish that he had somehow just connected the world and then maybe just made the Indian Lake trilogy a series of these kind of slasher stories that are happening throughout America. Um, I feel like I, I would have appreciated that more than what I got with the In Angel of Indian Lake. So now, because I'm really struggling to talk about this without really honing in on spoilers, I'm going to go into the spoiler section of this review. Um, because I, I just don't think I can do this review without really picking apart some of the things that I loved and hated and putting them all out in front of me. So spoilers will be starting now. But let's let's start with the first half of this novel where, or the first third I guess, where the slasher is, um, what was his name, Justin Joss. And we get a full origin story, we get the full tragic Jason Voorhees style death, we get the revenge story, we get no explanation on what started it and what launched um, Justin coming back to life, and I think that was a misstep in this novel. I think we needed something to start that. Um, and I know Stephen Graham Jones says that it's like Tolly's near-death peanut allergy experience that kind of summons him forward, but I just didn't buy that. Um, and then we have this crazy, crazy slasher scene with Justin and all of the kids who led to Justin's demise, and Stace being like this final girl moment, and she has a backstory, she has a relationship with Tolly, and it was fantastic. That whole pool scene was crazy. I loved the motivation that Tolly would have to become a slasher, why he would hate the marching band characters, why he would hate Mel so much, and e even if he didn't recognize it fully, why that revenge story would be there. I was so down for all of that. But then, it took on this component of all of the backstory that we got with Justin Joss kind of was just the catalyst to what was going to happen and it never came back. It really never came back. It happened, it was cool, it was interesting, and then we just moved on to something else. We didn't get anywhere near the amount of backstory on the marching band characters the way that we did on Justin Joss's victims. And I thought that was a misstep. I thought it would have been absolutely amazing to then go in to see more about these characters. One of the things that I didn't like about this idea of the slasherism becoming almost like a disease or a possession for Tali is that it took away for everybody involved their free will. And I didn't like that because Jade Daniels is such a feminist character. She's so well written and the way that um, Stephen Graham Jones handles the kind of abuse that she went through in pretty much all of the Angel of the, uh, the Angel of Indian Lake trilogy was so well done. And the fact that he takes away characters like rights to choose what they do with their bodies and how they act in the name of slasherism, I didn't love. I didn't love. I didn't love the comments on, um, the first two of Tali's victims, uh, like sexuality and how they basically did things that under normal circumstances they never would have done. I, I It just rubbed me the wrong way. And that to me was the real horror of the story was these people losing their bodily autonomy, um, losing their right to choose what they do with their bodies. I thought that was a really weird angle for Stephen Graham Jones to take. And it didn't need to be in there. They could have just been dumb teenagers. We've already seen that they're pretty vicious people for what they do to Tali at the at Deke's party. So taking away their right to this free will because of the slasherishness of it all, I did not love. I didn't like how all of these characters were being molded to fit a certain stereotype um, just to push the story forward. It felt very, very icky to me. 
Um, another thing that I think bothered me with this novel, and I know I'm really like criticizing it, but I did enjoy it. Um, but I just have to get like these things off my chest. Is I figured out that Amber was the final girl almost immediately. There's like a line really early on where like he's talking about like Stace being like final girl material, but he kind of mentions Amber as final girl material too. And I was like, oh, like, of course she's the final girl, right? And he kept alluding, like, why well, didn't get, like, the one victim left, so that's why I'm still a slasher and still able to write all of this. I was like, yeah, because Amber. Super simple. Like, the the twist of it, like, of the final girl not being Mel and being Amber, I was like, that was obvious from, like, miles and miles and miles away. Like, Texas is so flat, I could see that twist coming for two days straight, you know? So I just felt like that one kind of bothered me a little bit because I just felt like he put a lot on that being the twist, and it was so painfully predictable, and I don't expect that from Stephen Graham Jones. Um, and then, obviously, it was like, Mel was such an awful person, that to me, it's like, there's no way she could be the final girl. Like, she is the most evil out of all of them, and I don't buy that she wasn't actually trying to pull poison Tolly with the peanuts. I feel like that was very much intentional. Um, so I thought she was just evil as hell. Um, and so I just didn't have any sympathy for her. I had sympathy for the other marching band characters just because I do feel like the horrible things ended up happening to them that they didn't deserve, but none of these people are good people. And I, I wanted backstory, I wanted more of a motivation, and I kind of wanted Tali to almost choose his direction. I, I, I do love the the dynamic of him and Amber and him not being able to control himself and therefore like losing her and like the grief that that has and being forced to grow up and accept what you've done and everything. But I felt like there needed to be a little bit more like there was revenge on his brain and that subconscious is what pushed him forward, but he never really had that. So he just be kind of becomes this like tragic figure. Um, and that sucked. That really sucked. He is, the ending of this book is not great. It's, it, actually, it's, it's a fine ending. It's very, very bleak is what I should be saying. I thought the ending was very gut-wrenchingly bleak. But I also thought he was overreacting a little bit. Like, it seemed like his mom and Amber both kind of understood what was going on and, like, maybe would have been, like, okay with him. But he seemed to, like, really, like, ham up how tragic it was. Um, so I found that a little confusing. But I did overall think that I liked this book. Again, it, it definitely dragged a little bit when Amber was trying to kind of piece together what was happening with Tali. Um, there's, like, way too much space in between, like, the swimming pool scene and, like, Tolly's first victims and then his second set of victims. There's a lot of space in between there that I just didn't think was necessary. And he goes on a lot of tangents. This book easily could have been 50 pages shorter if we just took away a lot of the tangents in there. That being said, I do want to talk about the welder scene because I thought that was really, really interesting. Um, and out of all the tangents that was in there, I did love the welder scene because it did two things for me. One, it created this really interesting narrative and insight into who Tali was in a way that we hadn't really seen before. It really humanized him at his darkest hour um, and still showed how much he loved and cared about Amber. But two, um, it showed us how much of an unreliable narrator Tali is. And I think that was the big wake-up call. Like, anytime you have a first-person narration, I do feel like it's an automatic, unreliable narrator. But the fact that he wrote something that felt believable and then backtracked on it a chapter later and made us very aware made me start questioning everything else that he was saying. And after that, I started noticing certain inconsistencies, which I think Stephen Graham Jones did on purpose. A lot of times, the belts would be on Tali's face, but then, like, a page later, they would all be on his waist. And I was like, oh, like, there's no way he took them all off. Like, what is going on? here. Um, and the inside flap of this novel says, like, oh, everybody knows their names, right? Like, that that's the premise. Like, by the time this night is over, everybody will know their names. They're super famous. But then he's like, yeah, they didn't use my real name in the TV movie. Like, they couldn't have done that or something like that. Like, there's all these little teeny tiny things where you start to really pay attention and be aware to the great inconsistencies of Tali's story. And I, I loved that Stephen Graham Jones made me double check that he was an unreliable narrator because I just started kind of believing what he was saying and being like I don't know like maybe they weren't that mean or maybe it wasn't that bad but it was like no 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 maybe he's telling us things completely incorrectly and then you have to remember that he's writing to Amber and he has a lot of moments where he just conveniently blacks out 
So I was like, ooh, I wonder if he just didn't want her to know that he remembered because it was too gruesome what he was doing. Um, so I really appreciated that too. So yeah, all in all, I have a lot of criticisms about this novel, but I did really enjoy it. And it was perfect for spooky season. I, I was really happy reading it. Um, I know that it's set in July and it's set during the summer, but to me it felt very spooky season vibes. I really, really liked the kind of like woodsy, like adjacent moments that you get. I guess they're not woods because it is La Mesa, Texas and he makes like a huge, um, a, a huge remark that like this isn't happening in the woods because there's just no trees in Texas. But I kept seeing it in kind of like an autumnal wood setting and so I definitely got like spooky slasher vibes. Um, and I thought Tali was a really fun character and I think it's really interesting that Stephen Graham Jones explains at length how this is the character that he's put himself into the most and I really felt like I got a better understanding of who Stephen Graham Jones was as a kid and it made me understand Jade Daniels even more. Um, and again, I really did like Amber, and I liked Oshkosh, the llama. I thought that was such a funny little thing to like just randomly be in there. Another thing that I think is interesting is I have a Barnes & Noble edition, so there's um, like deleted scenes in the back, and he explains why those scenes were taken out. And it's only a couple paragraphs, but it, it's just further character development on um, both Amber and Tolly. And I really liked being able to read at the end some of the choices that um, Jones was making in why he removed scenes that I thought like were pretty well written and definitely explored more with each character. Um, but it also makes sense. Uh, it also makes sense to me why they uh, they were taken out because they gave too much away. Um, but yeah, no, I enjoyed this. I liked this far more than I did uh, the Angel of Indian Lake. I definitely wish that this had been somehow connected into that world because it is very, very similar in tone to the original My Heart is a Chainsaw, uh, just set at a different time and told through a different perspective. This time we get it through the unwilling slasher instead of the like unwilling final girl, right? And you, you have this angsty teenage um, like Native American girl who knows the slasher genre and is the most likable character in the entire book. And that can easily be Jade or Amber. And I, I like that Stephen Graham Jones said he had to try really hard to separate Jade from Amber. And I do think that he did a good job with that, but still, this could have all been in the same universe and I would have been much happier if that's what this was instead of that which was Indian Lake. So four stars, really, really happy I read it. Um, still, it's still no My Heart is a Chainsaw, but I didn't hate it, and that's great for Stephen Graham Jones because a lot of times I don't like the stuff that he writes, um, but now that I have three of his novels that I have enjoyed. So we have My Heart is a Chainsaw, Don't Fear the Reaper, and I Was a Teenage Slasher. I like those three books. Those are the three that will keep me interested in Stephen Graham Jones and what he has coming next. Anyways, that is all that I have for you guys today. As always, I try to post every Monday and Thursday, sometimes on Saturdays. And if you enjoy these videos, please hit the like and subscribe buttons down below, and I will catch you all in the next one. Mwah.